I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but I really didn't know how to do it. It's a lot of information to show. It's difficult to show it on the internet, but it surprises me and, and infuriates me how few people will carry medical. Uh, everybody thinks it's cool to carry a gun. Very few people also have medical, and those that do, even fewer have it on their person. Some might have it in a in the back of their car, maybe in a bag in their car. Very few people actually have it on them. And I've heard all the excuses. It's big, it's bulky, it's cumbersome. Where am I going to put it? Oh, I mean, what about, that's what she said. Can we at least do that? And my response to pretty much all of those people is... I get it, but... It's not that difficult of a problem. This is my boot kit. I wear it daily. You can see it's dirty. And it has pretty much everything that I need to have on my person to deal with most things. In my opinion, this is an extremely viable piece of equipment. Uh, this is the Riker nylon, and it's the stretchy one. I think it's like $80. Somewhere around in there. I really like it. I don't even know what's there. It, it's always on me. In mine, I have a softy wide tourniquet. You can tell it's worn, it's used, and it gets dirty and funky. Right here, I have two nasal dosages of Narcan. Narcan is... Something you need to make your decision with if you want to carry it or not. A lot of people I know take a very callous approach. If somebody's overdosing, I don't care. I do. So I don't do drugs. My family doesn't do drugs, but other people do. And as Pat McNamara says, Because we never want to miss an opportunity to be Batman. That's right. If you can be Batman and help somebody, you should. So I've got two doses of Narcan right here. And I've got it sealed in, in Mylar. It just keeps the form factor quite small. Uh, here, <laughs> you can see the drywall dust coming off it. This is a one inch roll that I've got flattened of Gorilla Tape Sharpie. And on this side, Pack of compact chest seals, uh, SWAT tourniquet. Is it the greatest tourniquet? No, but it does a whole lot of things. It's never a bad idea to have a backup tourniquet. We can get into that in a minute. There is a package of, let's see if you can see a little ear of it sticking up right there. Combat quick clot. Again, get into that in a little bit. And what else is there? There is some medical gloves in here. And then there is also some baby aspirin. A CPR little compact shield and some Benadryl. Why the baby aspirin and Benadryl? Hmm. No. It is up to you to make your decision on a topic like that. I'm not going to say publicly why I have it. But if I need it, it's there. Okay. So, unless you're rocking some, skin, some the serious skinny jeans. <sighs> skinny jeans. <sighs> I need a moment. I'm back. So the boot kit's viable unless you're... I can get it out. Many months later. Unless you're wearing skinny jeans. We're all 
God's creatures. We're all God's creatures. One debt to society later. Okay, I'm back. I promise, this time I mean it. If you're wearing skinny jeans, good on you. Not my thing. Let's leave it at that. So, God love you if you're doing it. Bless your heart. I guess you're going to have to figure out a different way to do it, how you'd carry a gun with that, too. Uh, good luck. I don't know. That's my solution to it. It's on your body. It's always with you. I would always rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So that's my opinion. That's my particular choice. If y'all feel differently, cool. We're both right. So the first thing I want to talk about here is going to be tourniquets. And I'll never cease to be shocked when I'll do a class and I have nurses in there and everybody would think a nurse oh if something happens they're gonna be great and <laughs> they'll echo the same thing i'm not that kind of nurse if there's blood everywhere i'm hitting a button i don't deal with that and i've had doctors that'll say the same thing i don't know how to deal with trauma outside of a hospital and none of this equipment means anything to them having medical equipment is great, but having medical equipment and not knowing how to use it is like owning a book and thinking you're educated. It's great to have it. doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to use it. So before us, I've got an assortment of tourniquets and there are many, many, many more. I've got a softy wide, got the cat Got a TK4, which is, I think, the TK4L. Got the standard TK4. And I've got a SWAT tourniquet. I've got a rat tourniquet. And then we'll get into improvised tourniquets down here later. The 800-pound gorilla for looking at all of this kind of stuff and for trauma, trauma treatment, trauma medicine in the field is going to be an entity called TCCC. So TCCC stands for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. And they are responsible for all military records to look at and really analyze and make decisions of what equipment works, what doesn't, what gets their stamp of approval to be able to be used, what doesn't. And they have very strict criteria for that. And the civilian leg arm branch branch of it will be called the TECC, Tactical Emergency Casualty Care. They have more data than you'll ever want to see. And certain tourniquets are approved and they keep approving more all the time, which is great, but it does give you kind of a lot of things to look at. Certain tourniquets are not approved. These two are approved. This is not, and there's a very specific reason why the SWAT is not, and there's a very specific reason why the RAT is not. And it gets even more complicated when you look at the history of the RAT, and we'll get into all that. I can't wait to see this disaster. So, there's pros and cons to both of these guys. I don't have trainers for all of them because there's so many anymore. I can't keep up. These are the two I like. I personally carry the softy wide because it folds down nice and flat. The cat is a great tourniquet, but the Velcro here carrying it in your boot just shreds everything. And it wears this Velcro and then it becomes an issue. And you don't want to stage this one with the windlass in here because that can get caught. When you get your tourniquets, you want to stage them correctly. So when you need to use them, they're ready. You do not want to leave it in the package. You want to have them out and ready to go because seconds matter. If somebody can bleed out in a matter of seconds, a bleed, can, a bleed out can happen between 60 and 90 seconds. So if it takes you 20 seconds to get to somebody, another 10 seconds, 20 seconds to grab your tourniquet, tear it out of the package, stage it, get it put on the leg and start cranking. That's a lot of time you've lost. 
So stage your tourniquets. Buy real tourniquets. Buy them from a good, reputable store. Not Amazon. No. 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 Not Amazon. Go to Medical Gear Outfitters. Go to Rescue Essentials. Go to uh, North American Rescue. Go to a good store that's actually going to sell you a real tourniquet. Don't be proud of yourself that you save five bucks on a tourniquet that could save your life or your kid's life, and it fails when you need it the most. Oh, I love trash. You're only going to use these things once. Now, the trainers, no, you use a lot. The trainers are the exact same thing, same quality, same everything, but they're different colors, so you know not to use something you've used a bunch of times, and it can be compromised. So, pros and cons between the two. This one relies on Velcro, has a plastic windlass. Mm, a lot of people are afraid of it. The new ones are great. They're not going to break on you. Get a real one. Can Velcro fail? Yep. When you're putting out a tourniquet, realistically speaking, the situation sucks. There's going to be sweat. There's going to be blood. There's going to be mud. There's going to be anything you can think of. It's going to suck. Velcro and those things can not be the greatest of friends. That being said, there's a lot of people here today because of this tourniquet. A good friend of mine is here today because of this tourniquet. Softy wide. And there is a softy regular. It's just how thick the band is. Does not rely on Velcro. It has a little cam, like a one-way cam, like a ratchet strap, and a metal windlass. I like this one because it folds so flat in my boot kit. That's the only reason I carry it. And the Velcro can be a point of failure. You've got to rip the Velcro open, pull it. We'll show that in demonstration here in a minute versus just grab and pull. So there's pros and cons to each. You need to find the one, honestly, train with both and then find one that you like. There's lots of medical classes. Don't get your information from some moron on the internet. Take a class. I do my classes for free. A lot of other people do too. Look around, find a class, take it. These guys, they're better than nothing. Really difficult to apply to yourself. That's kind of the story with a lot of these tourniquets. And that's why this one specifically did not pass. To put it onto yourself is a bugger. It just, it's a pain to apply it to yourself. So as a secondary tourniquet, as just a, a backup to do different things with, pressure dressing, a sling, works great. There's a lot of things it can do. It's not the greatest tourniquet, but it does offer you some options. The rats. The rats does work. It gets a very bad reputation. The RATS is based on a very, very, very old, proven design. But it's also not the most user-friendly to apply to yourself. It does have a couple of issues where it can get knocked loose. And there are some tissue damage issues and pressure issues with the band, especially when you get it tight enough. And when we get to this one, we'll talk about what it's based on. It's based on the most prolific tourniquet in our history that gives us a lot of the old wives' tales that we have in relation to tourniquets that simply are not true with, with the modern-day ones. I guess tissue damage can suck. Losing a limb could suck, but losing your life probably sucks more. So, let's get these guys out of the way. Now, I know, I know, not everybody can afford the amazing training equipment that I have. If you guys just put in the time and are able to scrape together the thousands and thousands of pennies, <laughs> 
that I have for my demo aids. Kind of a big deal. You can have it too. I really highly recommend if you're going to get a tourniquet, get a practice tourniquet and train with it. Train your kids with it. Train your other half with it. So they know what they're doing. Having it's great. Having it not know how to use it. Like I said, it's the equivalent of having a book that you've never opened and you think that you've read it. It's not, not doing you any good. This I have to show. This is a little piece of plumbing insulation wrap. I've got a piece of hose in here to act as your artery, a dowel for the bone, and this just muscle tissue on top of it. To explain to someone what you're trying to do with these tourniquets, you're trying to collapse this down enough to compress the artery to stop the bleed. So that's why this guy's here. It's also for wound packing and to show how things like, oh, sweet Jesus. How things like, oh, I don't need to have pressure dressing. I don't need to have tourniquets. I don't need to have rolled gauze. I have some tampons and you just pop it right in the hole and it stops the bleeding instantly. My friend saw this and it happened and he, okay. I know, everybody's got that m just mystical friend that's done something. Stop. Here's your sign. It doesn't work. So we've got this to kind of show the ins and outs of those things, and we'll kind of show that in a minute here. And then, again, I have this, which is just a foam roller. Like with those foam back rollers. I got it off of Amazon. I think it was like a massive $10. And I've got a big slash I made in in here for a wound packing for like, let's say, a knife wound or a really bad paper cut. And then we've got a hole here that I just cored out. And that can act as like a bullet hole for, again, wound packing. So this gives you some options to just sit and train on as opposed to spending a thousand dollars on getting that fake leg from North American Rescue, which is really cool, but I don't have that kind of money. I'm broke as shit and I don't mind saying it. This has quite a bit of density to it. So this is gonna really help you understand when you're turning it. Tourniquets suck, they hurt, but you're gonna have to really get it in there. And this also will show you Things like the rats, how it digs in. Things like, uh, I've even seen ones for paracord to make a tourniquet. Don't. So that's what we have here for those. Now, I'm going to do my best to try to get this to go. With a tourniquet, current guidelines tell us in a mass trauma situation, or if you have multiple patients, just throw a tourniquet on it if it's bleeding. If you come up to a, certain, uh, a situation and there's a lot of blood, put a tourniquet on, move on to the next person, if, or the next injury if you can. Well, what's a lot of blood? Ah, I'm bleeding! Ah, I'm bleeding! Oh no! <laughs> The old adage is, if you walk up to a situation and say, wow, that's a lot of blood, that's going to be your sign to throw a tourniquet on it. A really old school way of determining the amount of blood, and I know, I, I have seriously fancy equipment here. Right here. Let's see, do I have a bill or anything I can put next to it? My really cool ink pen. We'll put that there. To give you a gauge of how big this is. If you saw that next to somebody on the ground, this wouldn't be a lot of blood. But how do you estimate how much is a lot of blood? Take your hand. One. Two. Three. Roughly four. Let's go with. This is roughly 20 cc's of blood. So this is approximately 80 cc's of blood loss that you're gonna come up on and see somebody with. It is not a perfect estimation tool, but it's something that gives you an idea of how to go by. 
Don't worry, Beva. Oh. It's not an emergency. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get all this in. Probably not. This would be roughly the equivalent of 750 cc's of blood. Tourniquet. Now. So if you walk up and say, that's a lot of blood camera, put a tourniquet on it. Current guidelines for tourniquets are under two hours. You really don't have a whole lot to worry about. And in a civilian situation, realistically speaking, you're going to be very hard pressed to get into a circumstance where they're not going to be at a hospital in that time. There's really not going to be any damage with the exception of maybe something like the rats or an improvised tourniquet. You're not going to have to worry about. There's a lot of old wives tales where you put a tourniquet on, you're going to lose a limb. That's not true. So if you come up to a situation and you see a bad injury, that's a lot of blood, put the tourniquet on. Where does the tourniquet go? Let's say this is our wound. You want to go a minimum of three inches above it. If you want to just use your fingers, that'll give you a rough three inches. It's a little bit less, but that'll give you a rough three inches. Phrasing. Phrasing. Go roughly three inches or you can go hind tight. Now, on a leg, you may end up having to do both. It shocks a lot of people, but the 2 C has come out with findings that most tourniquets applied to most leg wounds failed to stop it with one tourniquet. I believe the failure rate was like 65%. I could be wrong. Don't 100% remember, but it's in that ballpark. That's scary because most people have one tourniquet and think they're completely taken care of. You're not. Tourniquets are not always a success story. Tourniquets often require a second tourniquet, which is why having, let's say, a backup like this is a really good idea if it fails to stop bleeding. And there's all kinds of other issues if you don't tighten it hard enough and you're only stopping venous bleeding. Uh, okay, let's, let's not get into that. Tighten your tourniquets down tight enough. All right. So we're starting with our cat. Meow. You're going to put it on over the leg. Let's say you're doing this to yourself. You are going to pull always, always, always pull towards you if you're putting it on you. If you're putting it on someone else, pull towards you as well. You're going to be on the other side. So you're going to put it on, pull. Try to get it done as much Velcro as you can. Velcro on this one is pretty tired because it's been used a whole lot. So we're roughly three fingers above our wound. When you're going to put a tourniquet on somebody, explain to them what you're doing and apologize. I'm here to help. I'm going to put a tourniquet on. You've really been hurt bad. This is going to suck. I'm sorry. I've got to hurt you to help you because it's going to suck. They're going to, they're not going to like it. No one likes a tourniquet. So you want to have this as tight as you can get it before you really start to turn the windlass. In a perfect world, you get it very tight. You're going to turn. That's our first turn. Doing this around a camera is proving to be very interesting. Okay. Now, you can see here, we're digging into the foam a bit. And this is really high density foam, but it's not horrible. There's a lot of pressure on here. It's tight. When you stage a cat, this piece does not go over top of this piece. No, you don't want to have another thing to worry about doing when you're putting this tourniquet on. So this piece stays here. You put the windlass as tight as you can get it. People are probably going to be yelling. They're going to be screaming. It's going to suck. Prepare yourself for it. Do not loosen it. Doesn't do them any good loose. It's got to be tight. The old adage when I'm turning past. Ah! 
this goes over, then you use your Sharpie, you write the time down on it. So time. It used to be where if you were, I'm gonna take this off camera to do it because it's just easier. People believed if you put a tourniquet on, you were gonna lose that appendage. That's not true. TCCC and TECC findings have told us that one to two hours, the risk factor is marginal. Two to six hours, uh, that is the iffy area. But if you're in a civilian situation within six hours, if you're not in hospital, things have gone seriously sideways for you. After six hours, there can be metabolites that rush back into the blood that have been blocked off that can cause all kinds of issues. They need to be in a hospital situation for that. It's nothing you're gonna to need to worry about. You can read it for yourself in this photostatic copy. I, the undersigned, shall forfeit all rights, privileges, and licenses, hearing and hearing contained, etc., etc. Fax mentis incendium gloria calpum, etc., etc. Memo bis punitor delicatum. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. So, that's the cats. Meow. 100% proven tourniquet. If you have them, they're fantastic. You're good. Softy wide. All right, let's keep everything the same. All right, so there's our wound. Boy, the blue on blue doesn't exactly do well for demonstration here, I'm seeing on the camera. Let's get our roughly three fingers. Got a nice pull tab here, and this is what I say by staging them. They're as big as they can get, they're staged. You grab the pull tab and you pull. Pull towards you, tighten down. <laughs> is that easier than the Velcro? I think so, but it's up to you. Also with this one, let's say you had to go underneath somebody's leg, you couldn't lift it. This does clip out. If I can do this around the camera. You can unclip it and then clip it to get back in and around. I really like these tourniquets. Pull towards you, pull tight. Now, make sure this is out of the way. This is a, this is a little bit older. The newer ones actually have kind of a similar. This is one of my carry ones in my bag. The newer ones have this little clip here to help trap it. So you trap in the little hook and then you put this in. This is just the newer generation. My trainer is a bit, a bit old, but it still works. So I haven't bothered to replace it yet. So this one's built much the same way. The windlass is metal. You're not gonna break it. You're just going to turn. And we'll try to get this one, I'm gonna say as tight as what we had the cat. Okay, and you lock it in. Again, it's not gonna go anywhere. You can bump it. This one. You can see we're not really getting any kind of Cutting, that's what you want to make sure of, is cutting into this foam or leg. That is the softy. Now, if you're going to put one roughly three inches from the wound, where would the next one go? You can go right on top of it. You can go high and tight. What does high and tight mean? It is as high up on the appendages you can possibly get. So if it was a leg, you'd go up into the groin area. Two of them should do it. You hope it's gonna do it. You hope one's gonna do it, but you don't know. That's the problem. You hope for the best, but you need to prepare for the worst. So those are the two I have that are TCCC approved and that I like, I recommend. The SWAT which is a gigantic rubber band. No, you can't use it to 
take a slingshot. Well, I guess you can. Okay, I've done. This one's kind of neat. It actually gives you destructions on it of how far to stretch it to get it tight. And then you wrap it around. The main reason this did not get approved, it's pretty much the same issue I'm going to have trying to show it to you. I don't know how I'm going to show it on camera. I really don't. Um, we're going to try. So you're going to take it. Do our three fingers, roughly. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do this on camera. You can trap it under an arm or a leg. Okay, I'll probably be able to do it now. It will grab to itself once you get it over. And this is nice and fat, so it's not going to dig in. And you can really put some torque on it. You're going to pull. You can see if you were doing this to yourself, it would be interesting. Doing this here is still a bit of a pain. Camera. So now we've got it wrapped around. How do we finish it? You're going to take the end, put it underneath as best you can, and tuck it. And because it's grippy and rubber, it will hold to itself relatively well. Can it slip out? Absolutely. That's kind of the issue with these guys. It 100% can pop out of there. But this is a great backup tourniquet and it's really good for multiple different uses. This fella. Yeah, I'll roll it up after. <sighs> uh, okay, let's get to these ones. DK4. They're not bad. They're not bad. They have their issues. Again, they suck to be put on by yourself. But loop it around. We're going to find this end. Get roughly three inches. Okay. Come on, get under there. Even here, it's not the easiest to do. Okay, you know, you always pull towards yourself. Pull and then wrap. Again, this is relatively wide. This is one of the wider ones, but it's far from being great. It's better than nothing. Is it really tough to get this tight enough? Yeah, especially on yourself. Same thing with the SWAT. It's tough to get these tight enough. But it does work. It's better than nothing, but just marginally. These are the quicks, and they're the exact same thing. We have a lot of blue stuff. These are the exact same thing. Ooh, this one's getting ready to be gone away. This is effectively just a big rubber band, and it's just big and stretchy. Same thing. It's not as heavy duty of material, but the nice thing is this packs down into something tiny that anybody can put in a pocket. Is it what you really want to see someone carrying? No, but these work exactly the same way. The other one's just a little more heavy duty, a little bit longer, the hooks are a little bit better. The rat. <laughs> Kicking a hornet's nest here. 
So the rat is a relatively simple one to use. On yourself, not the easiest, but it's easy to use to get it tight now. So we're gonna pull tag in through the loop. You want the loop to be big enough. Don't make the loop tiny. It's gonna be our customary three inches. Okay, we're a little bit over, but that's all right. Pull, wrap. Oops. That can happen. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get another wrap. So we're gonna to have to stop it there. Now, you cross over and get into the cleat. I don't know how well it's showing up. Is it digging in a little bit? It is. If you layer it sufficiently, the idea is the coils next to each other and layered perfectly will give you similar surface area as one of these guys. That's if you can get enough wraps on it. Bigger leg, you might only get one wrap. The other issue with this is this can be bumped out. It's rare, but if somebody's moving around, twisting, squirming, this gets on the ground, it gets snagged, it can pop out. It's not my favorite tourniquet, it does work, but there is there's some issues. You can actually see the indentation in there still. You can get a lot of pressure with this, but that's good and it's bad. So what is that based on? Might shock some folks to know that the most commonly used tourniquet that has saved the most lives on the face of the planet is right there. This is what has been issued to everyone for many, 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 many years. And this little fella here is the source of a lot of our old wives' tales. You'll be able to see when it's implemented where the design came from and the improvement came from to make this. It's quite similar. So this is just a piece of surgical tubing. If you can afford nothing else, you can afford this. This is like two bucks on Amazon. Do I recommend it? Probably not, because it really sucks. But, no, oh boy, this one's going to be another fun one to show. So we go three inches. You're going to take the tubing, and you're going to fold over a nice big loop like this. Now, I'm going to have to go off camera to do this. So you've got your big loop. And you're going to come around and trap the loop with your first wrap. Like this. Now again, I'm not going to be able to get it real tight just because I'm trying to show you on here. Imagine trying to do this to yourself. Now imagine trying to do it in combat. Good luck. So you're going to wrap it around as many times as you can. And again, the idea is the more coils, the more surface area, the less tissue damage. So now... You've got your wraps. You bring your tag end through the loop. Okay, grab the loop, pull, and I've got it tight so you can see it's not exactly, when I, I did a little bit oversized too. It's not exactly being friendly, but this is also pretty sticky material. I'm gonna pull this in and through, and that's gonna trap that. This saved some lives, but it also caused some limbs to be lost and gave us a lot of the horror stories that we still believe. So there's that one. But is it better than nothing? Well, yeah, it's better than nothing. Good Lord. All right, we got a lot of stuff here. So let's go into 
improvised medicine. Tourniquet related. The words no EMS provider wants to hear on arrival of a scene is, hey, I put on a tourniquet because it's probably a belt and it's done absolutely nothing. Good on you for trying, but if you had actual uh, proper medical equipment and training, you could have helped more than what you're doing. Boston bombing, uh, the marathon bombing, I want to say there was close to 100 tourniquets applied. The overwhelming majority were all improvised. I think they almost all were improvised. And I think something like 5% were actually successful. That's not a good thing. Okay, so let's get to improvised. We'll get some common things here. A necktie. I don't have, do I have a belt? Wow, I don't actually have a belt. Thought I did. It's tough to do it. I'm going to show you some improvised ideas that can actually potentially work. A necktie. Is it great? No, but it can potentially work. Again, we do our three inches above the wound. Tie. You're gonna need a windlass. So hopefully a very, very strong pen. Put it here. Tie again. Yeah, doing this around the camera is fun. Okay, so we do it again, and then make our knot. And then you twist. The windlass is the key here. The tie is good because it's nice and thick. You're gonna twist until you can't twist anymore. And then you can either take the pan and you can tie it to try to hold it in place with this. Or you can cut a hole in the fabric of the pants and slip the pen into that. If you can get it tight enough, I probably can, but don't really want to destroy things. You can slip it on the other side of the necktie. Can this system actually develop enough pressure to work? It can, yeah. Is it a first choice? No. But it can work. Let's go even more improvised. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. Okay. Now this is already cut because I've shown it multiple times and believe it or not, I don't have infinite amounts of money just to continually cut these things and show it. So let's say, We have a leg wound. You have nothing on you. You can take a pair of pants, preferably heavy pants, denim, jeans, something like that. You cut strips on each side all the way up. Try to get three inches, four inches. If you can only do two, it's fine. Cut a strip up on each side of the leg. Follow the seam, that's your guide. So you've got your seams. Then you can take, again, this is improvised medicine, but it's actually improvised that could work. So we're gonna improvise here with just nothing but what we have in front of us. So we're gonna take one strap, go over. The other strap is gonna come around. I can do this on camera, I swear. And they're gonna get tied. So it went from one direction to the other. I'm gonna tie it here. Same trick with our tie that we did. Take your ink pen, tie, and we're gonna give ourselves a windlass. And then you're gonna turn. This one is really tough to get the pressure that you need. 
it, there's just no way around it. But it's possible to develop the kind of pressure that you need if your pen's up to the task. And then when you get yourself as tight as you can get, you either take the ink pen and tuck it under here, or you can cut a little slit, you put the nose of it in, and then it holds itself. Is it great? No, but it has potential of working as opposed to, I put a belt on as tight as I can get it. And God bless you for trying, but it's not getting the job done. A lot of people say, well, I don't need a tourniquet. I have some paracord and I can do it with this. <sighs> don't. The idea is you wrap it around. They even make some buckles like this that I've seen for paracord specifically. And the people that sell it just need a beating. It, it's going to cut in. There's no way around it. This is going to do tissue damage. Just no. It, it doesn't work. There's no way to do it. That's not going to put somebody in an extreme amount of pain. You're going to damage tissue horridly. And it's probably not going to even be effective. So we're going to be moving into that one. All right. So where are we at now? We have covered improvised tourniquets. I'm going to take a minute and pack this stuff up because my desk is destroyed. So we've covered most improvised medicine. Let's kind of knock the elephant in the room out. Phone-in product. Well, I don't carry a tourniquet or quick clot because I have tampons. And if I get in trouble at the range or anywhere else, you can just put the tampon in, press this down, and this is made to stop bleeding. Ah! <laughs> Better. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the totality of what's inside of there. Let's open this up. This is normally roughly two four by fours of gauze. That's probably about it folded. That's what you have. That's what's gonna stop bleeding. Hmm. How do we stop bleeding? Do you stop su just superficial bleeding or do you want to have enough pressure to compress this artery down and not allow it to flow blood? Like our tourniquet, that's what our tourniquet's doing. It's crushing this artery down. Hmm. How do you keep pressure on it? I guess you could put a pressure dressing around it, but how do you know how deep it needs to be? This is urban legend. Don't. And please don't in the comments, well, my friend was here and he saw this and this worked. You know, and there's also people that have fallen out of airplanes without a parachute, hit the ground and walked away without an injury. Dumb things happen. Don't bet your life on dumb things. This is for a feminine use. Don't be that guy. Now, talking about wound packing. This is, this little thing fell out. This is H&H &H compressed gauze. And this is a trainer for combat quick clot. This is inert, but it gives you the same feel of what it is. It doesn't have a little uh, doodad in it where they can scan it and find out if there's quick clot in the wound. Some of these do, some don't. It doesn't really make a difference. This has a chemical compound on it of, I think it's like crushed shells uh, or clay, clay and crushed shells that makes blood coagulate. 
There's been a lot of testing on this. It does stop bleeding faster, but when used properly, I do not know of a single case where quick clot has saved a life versus wound packing gauze. So you need to make your mind up. This is right now like 50 bucks if you can find it. Not this because this is the trainer. These are like 50 bucks for combat gauze if you can find it. This is three, four. If you know how to use it and you use it correctly, this is fantastic. They do wonderfully. So does this. I guess for me, for my family, if there's a 1%, 2% chance that this could result in saving their lives over this, I'm completely willing to make that sacrifice to pay to have this. And, <coughs> excuse me, in the kits I have for me and my family, I have this. In my trauma kits that I have for if need be, God forbid, I have standard wound packing gauze. And I do supplement Quick Clot with wound packing gauze because you can have two or three of these in a kit in addition to one pack of this. So this is neat stuff because it forms a clot relatively quickly, but you're wound packing with it. So you need to make your mind up which one fits your budget and fitting your budget. Do you see the benefit of potentially having a few percent greater bleed stopping ability, faster bleed stopping ability over this? You know, it's a tough one. Do I choose to do this? I do. I do. <clears throat> do I think everybody should? Yeah. Again, tough one. You need to wrap your head around if even one package of this in your family's kit is worth it. Because you can buy a whole lot of this for what you can get for one of these. For me, I've made the sacrifice to have this in the kits that we have that we would need, God forbid. I don't have the funds to have it for my throw kits and everything. And when I say throw kits, I have a bunch of kits like this made up. Um, it's just, it's good to have. I keep some of these in, in the trunk along with our medical kits. You never know. You never know. So let's go over how this works. We'll start with the stand. Well, oh, hell, they work the same way. Does it really make a difference? Okay, so we'll just we'll use the quick flat one. Z folded gauze gets its name because it's hey, folded like a Z. Shocking, I know. And these are the same thing. They're they're all the same exact stuff. So when we do a tourniquet, it's going to be on an appendage going to be on an arm or a leg. If you have a wound in, uh, it's called the box, basically from your chin to your groin, you really have very few options. We'll get into that in a little bit, but this is again, you're not gonna wound pack a body because you're not gonna have enough gauze. You're just gonna end up putting a whole lot of gauze in there and moving stuff around and making a great big mess. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. If somebody has a very bad wound on a body with the exception of a chest seal, which we'll get to momentarily, and or pressure dressing, they need a hospital. They need an operating room. There's not a lot you're gonna do in the field. So if they have a large laceration on a leg or an arm, or a junctional point where you can pack junctional points, uh, you know, into your, your neck where there's bone where you can actually hit something, uh, pelvis. You're gonna take your gauze 
and most there's different kinds there's rolled gauze there's all kinds of stuff you're gonna take you're gonna fold it into a ball well you can tell how many times this has done this it actually wants to go into that ball you're gonna take roll into a ball and this is called you use your own term for it monkey knot monkey ball uh, there's been all kinds of what's the other ones anyway you're gonna roll it into a little ball you're gonna take this and jam this into the central area of the wound as hard as you can get it down in there again what we're trying to do here is we're trying to force that down to press down on the artery you're gonna press that against bone and you're gonna stop the flow so when you wound pack you're gonna press in very important now on a lot of these there's actually little tabs where you can't drop it and make a big mess leave this finger in providing pressure pressure stops bleeding always pressure stops bleeding you're gonna do a little fold you're gonna take this finger in while leaving your this guy still on press down trade off when you get down to the bottom do not let off with this finger until this finger takes over and then just repeat And for a wound like this, you can close the wound. You get the point. When you get to the top of the wound, what do I do with this? Well, take this, put it over top. Same thing with bullet wound. This is all the same stuff. Now, we talked about the SWAT tourniquet being a great pressure dressing. What is a pressure dressing? It's exactly what it sounds like. You can take the, the SWAT tourniquet that we had, wrap it around tightly, fold it down. Pressure stops bleeding. This in and of itself, great. This in and of itself with pressure on top of it, really good. My favorite is going to be an Israeli bandage. And these guys come like this. Very importantly, they put these things through a serious wrap job. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's wrapped, I think, two or three times. Not only is it shrink wrap in this, there's also a really heavy-duty Mylar package inside that this is in again. So you can actually take it out of this. It does have the destructions on it. Might not be a bad idea for you to keep. But with anything like this, it does have tabs. I would always take and put tape across it. So under a stressful situation, you can find that tab. It's nice and big and rip it open. Uh-oh, we dropped our wound packing gauze. Okay, so here's our, here's our wound. When you get these nice, shiny, and new, which mine is not, camera, they're, let me see if I can actually find a couple of them on here still. This dressing is well used. I can't even see him anymore. So it has stitches on it where when you open it to this point, this won't just roll open. It's stitched here. You'll have to, to pop a stitch every rotation you take. This one does not have that. This is the Israeli bandage with the extra pad on it. And you can either locate this pad to the back side of the wound potentially if you had a wound here. So you've got your front pad. Boy, this is kind of a cluster to do. If you've got a wound on the back and a wound on the front, you can locate these pads on both sides. Or you can just double them up. Or if you need that pad somewhere else, hey. So how we use this is we're going to put the pad on here over top of the wound packing gauze that we have. Yeah, this is gonna be simple enough to do on camera. Oh yeah, I can hear the comment section now. You're doing this wrong. Believe it or not, this isn't the easiest thing to do. Okay, so you're gonna wrap it around. Holy crud, is this being ugly? All right, so we're on camera. You've got this pad directly over top of the wound and mainly this clip 
right here needs to be directly over top of the wound. This is what gives us pressure, hence the term pressure dressing. Amazing, huh? So lock the material into place. Lock it into place here, see? Little clip, easy to do. Then come back and pull. Get this as tight as you can get it. Oh yeah, not gonna be an issue on camera at all. All right, so we're gonna come around and go over top of that. Now, if we need more pressure, this is our clip. You can cross this material directly over top and continue to go. That gives us substantially more pressure on here to help add pressure to our wound pack. And then you just wrap until you're done wrapping. All right, so you're left with this little clip. Pretty simple. We go find a, edge of the material, find an edge of the material, and you lock it in. This is an Israeli bandage, pressure dressing. Can this sort of work as a tourniquet? Mm, sort of, not bad. These do quite a lot. You can use them for a lot of things, head wounds. You don't have to have the wound packing gauze. There's a very substantial pad in it, but these are really wonderful, really proven pieces of equipment. And mine is very well used and probably at the point where it should be retired. So that's our Israeli bandage. Highly recommend these. They're like $8, I think. Well, who knows? Everything is sky high right now, medically speaking. Oh, you go over there. Okay. Yeah, my desk is not a mess. Let's say we have a bullet wound in the middle of the chest. This is effectively a chest seal. That's the only real option we have. This individual needs an operating room. There's not a lot you can do in the field to help them, with the exception of a chest seal. And this chest seal is actually a SAMS. I don't have a trainer for the other one. I need to replace that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. They all work the same way. A chest seal is a really big sticker and <laughs> they're very comical because they include this really nice piece of four by four gauze because if you have a chest wound or a sucking chest wound which would be the cause for these guys this one tiny little piece of four by four is going to help you clean all of the blood the sweat and the gunk with just this guy realistically speaking if you have an entry wound you probably have an exit wound so if you're going to use one on the front, use one on the back. If your chest seals are vented, you don't really have to worry a whole lot about them. If they're not, then you do need to worry about burping them. But this is a whole different conversation. And hopefully nobody's going to have to worry about that. Um, SAMs, by the way, are, in my opinion, probably the best for canines. They have probably the stickiest and the thickest adhesive on them. Uh, for people, even furry ones like myself, uh, the North American Rescues work really, really well. So all you do is you take it, peel the sticker. Now these are not vented, but you can see it pretends it's vented. Again, it's just a training aid. Take it directly over top of the wound. You got a bullseye, bullseye, Wound, there. Backside, same thing. If you've got a, we can say the, the exit wound's right there, place it right over top. Now, you'll see on the internet, the wonderful place that it is, 
oh, you don't need to buy chest seals because they're really, really expensive. You can just use uh, dressing, petroleum dressing. And then you duct tape it down. There's many ambulances that don't even carry chest seals. They have petroleum dressings. And you can use the wrapper from the petroleum dressing to tape it down. What is a petroleum dressing? It is exactly what it sounds like. I have one here. That's what this guy is back here. I'm not going to take it out because it is a piece of gauze, just like this, that has been impregnated with Vaseline petroleum. And it can be used as a burn dressing, which it's fantastic for. And you can make it a somewhat viable chest seal with it. And again, I'm sure somebody's going to chime in here, but I don't know about you, but I've used duct tape a lot. Have you ever tried to duct tape something when somebody is wringing wet and covered in blood? Now, Gorilla Tape is fantastic stuff. I love it. That's what I use pretty much exclusively for everything. But getting it to stick, with the exception of the uh, their version of Flex Seal that you can use underwater, which is great, good luck. It, it really doesn't work that way. Most duct tapes suck at putting things together anyway. The surface needs to be dried and cleaned with alcohol, and then it needs to have time to set up. People who say you can use a chest seal or use a, a piece of petroleum dressing in place of a chest seal are people that have never tried it in a real-world environment. They've done it on a training mannequin, and it's, hey, this is fantastic. Well, yeah, it's a training dummy. It's dry. Get that thing soaking wet, much less with blood. Don't work so well. But... It can work in a pinch. You just need to make sure you get that wound as dry as you can get it. And what you would do, let's say if you're using the packaging uh, of your petroleum dressing, which you can do, you would tape down, same thing in the middle, tape down three sides to allow this side to vent. When somebody will breathe out, it allows air to escape. When they breathe in, it stops it. Sucking chest wound. Basically, when you breathe in, air comes through here. Air wants the least path of resistance. What's left? Triangle bandage. Again, another one of those macgyver fantastic items. Call it a cravat. Call it a triangle bandage. Call it a big hunk of fabric. These can be used for almost anything. You can make a sling with it. You can treat a headdress. You can make a headdressing with it and treat a head wound. You can use it as a tourniquet. Again, you uh, improvise medicine, fold it open. It's like a, like a cloth bandana. And then use a windlass to develop tension. These guys do a lot and they're about a buck. Fantastic little items that you can do an awful lot with it. It's going to be tough to show it, but again, it's a sterile, depending upon what kind you get, little piece of gauze. It's really strong. And you can do a ton with it. I really like these. I think everybody needs to have at least a couple of them in their kit. Wonderful. And I think we have now come to the end of this very long-winded video. You were droning on! If anybody cares, this is what I call my toss kits. Uh, I have a triangle bandage. I have a roll of gauze. I have a roll of Coban, which is just a cling. A TK4 tourniquet. I've got a pair of gloves, the big Gorilla Tape, two Mylar blankets, petroleum dressing, and a package of Z-Fold gauze. And a CPR mask right there. This is kind of what I have staged where if you come onto a mass trauma event, be it a gigantic car accident, be it whatever, you have multiples of these where you can, hence the name, toss them and get them in front of people where either hopefully they can start working on things or you have it in front of everybody to when you get to them, you're able to 
treat them with what's in front of them. You don't have to carry a great big bag around. You put this in front of them. So I like having them. Is it for everybody? No. Is there... Gosh, I don't know. Probably $40 worth of stuff in here. In today's market, at least. Um, but I like having it. I feel better about having it. God forbid. I do have... I've got my very large trauma kit in my trunk. I've got a really substantial medical kit on the headrest of the seat. Again, if you're rented, you may not be able to get to your trunk. And the last thing I want to do is watch my spouse or my son bleed out in front of me and I don't have equipment to help. So I've got that. I've got my boot kit with me at all times. And then I've got my bag that I carry with me that my wife affectionately refers to as my purse <laughs> or Merce, which I think is almost more fun. So kind of love to last forever. And I want you here with me. I I have some overkill. Yes, I know. I have issues. I don't care. I would much rather be overprepared and never need it than have a tragedy happen to my family and I'm not ready. So get training. Take a class, get some equipment, train with it, learn how to use it. You don't buy a gun and set it on the safe and carry it every day and never shoot it and not know how it works. Don't do the same thing with medical equipment. It doesn't help you if you have no idea how this stuff works. You can afford a foam roller and practice wound packing. You can afford this and practice putting on tourniquets. You can afford this and practice your pressure bandages. You can, you can do it. Again, to get five packages of this, 10 packages of this, use one of them as a trainer. You can do it. You know, it, hey, shut up, stupid. Sorry, my dog's grumping. Squirrel! You can do that. The tourniquets, I get it, man. They're 30, 40 bucks a piece right now, if you can find them. Do not get the knockoffs on Amazon or eBay. I don't care what the price is. I don't care if they swear up and down that they're real. Don't. If you're gonna get one tourniquet, get a trainer. Get the trainer before you can, if you can't afford to get two, you can only get one a month, get the trainer first. Learn how to use it. It doesn't do you any good to have it and have no clue what you're doing with it. Practice on yourself. Feel, you'll be able to know when you're doing it. And honestly, it's good to be able to do it where you know how bad it's gonna hurt. So you know if you're doing it to your spouse, I'm sorry, this is going to suck, but it could save your life. So, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Sign up for a class, please. You know, not only could it save your life, your family's life, maybe even somebody else's. This stuff's an investment like anything else. But if you budget, if you watch sales, you can get it. Bye.